With this video, we're going to start a process that I call meta sequencing. And the goal is to turn this 4x4 grid controller, or maybe a MIDI keyboard, into a live performance groove tool. And we don't want to be thinking about individual notes like we have been, right? In our previous configurations, I can play the individual pads, and they play back individual notes. What I would like is to think on a broader scale, a kind of meta level, where each pad is a pattern, and we can switch between the patterns on the fly and create new groove options um, in an improvisation context. It really does take advantage of a huge number of Live's features and gets us right into the philosophy of Live, which is a launching of clips and keeping everything perfectly quantized to the grid and um, interesting as we go, right? So the idea here is to explore these techniques. You may find that you really like this process and want to keep on going with it with your own productions. You may find that it's a little bit tedious and not um, how you want to work. That's fine. You know, I'm not saying that you have to work this way. Um, but you'll find that if you do go through the process, you'll have a much better understanding of live signal flow and also all the clip uh, launching and automatic launching capabilities. So let's check out the process, go through it once, and see how it works for you. The first thing we'll have to do is record a variety of, of simple clips, right? A variety of simple kick patterns, simple hat patterns, simple snare patterns, and simple fills that we can kind of move between later. And we'll find that we want to be quite simple in the beginning because the complexity really builds up toward the end. And to be able to do that kind of recording of elements really efficiently, the first thing we'll have to do is set up some signal flow and some mapping. So let's start with the signal flow. We have a single drum rack that we're going to be using for this, and it'll probably be your mega kit. And then you'll have a series of MIDI tracks that are routed to that. So we want a variety of MIDI tracks all routed to one uh, large kit that we're dealing with. So I'll create a MIDI track here. And I'm viewing the I.O. Uh, make sure you have your I.O. visible and that your clip view is small enough that you can see all the I.O. Because if that's too big, it will hide that stuff and you want to be able to see that. Uh, we're going to set the MIDI output of this track to be that mega kit track, or the in my case, it's kit core session dry track. But we don't want to go to the track input. If we were to go to the track input, if I were if I was to play from this track, I could record into clips into this track, and I would have to deal with the monitoring modes. Instead, we'll bypass track in and go directly to the drum rack itself. So it's as if this MIDI track isn't going to the input of this track, but is instead going directly to the kit here. It's a very cool thing, and actually if you open up this list, you'll see that the signal flow possibilities in live are quite extensive, and a MIDI track can actually be routed to any other track and any chain in any rack in any other track. So it's quite powerful, and we're going to go right to that drum rack itself. I can now record enable this track and play. And we'll see that it doesn't matter what this track input monitoring is set to. I can record on this track and route it right to here. That's great. Now, this track is going to be a variety of kick patterns, but let's create the other tracks we need. I'll use that duplicate key command that I love so much, Command-D on a Mac, Control-D on a PC, and we'll get three more tracks, so four tracks in total, uh, four MIDI tracks in total plus our drum rack track. And we're going to call this one kick. You can use the tab key command to go right to the next track and start doing that name. This will be snare hat, and fills. All right, so now we have our signal flow set up correctly, and if I was to record enable this track, we could pull up snare stuff there. Just check they all work. That works, and that works. Excellent. Now we want to set up some mappings. And the idea with this process, or how I'll be going about it, is recording into this one clip and then just dragging those to the appropriate places. So I want to MIDI map this to be able to be launched on the fly. And I'll use this pad right here. So let's start MIDI mapping mode. And click on that. We'll map it right there. Now the other things I'll need is tempo. So I'll change the tempo to this fader right here. My click track, I'm actually going to map to a fader, and we'll use this fader right here. And then session view record, we'll do to this fader right here. Uh, right away, I'll go to my mapping mode and adjust that tempo mapping to be 80 to 130. And let's get out of MIDI mapping mode. I just want to show you one thing. When you are mapping something that's like a button, like this uh, click on or off, but you've mapped it to a fader, once that fader gets above 64, and you can even look in this big readout on my trigger finger here, when that gets above 64, the click will turn on. And when it gets below 64, the click will turn off. And the same thing's going to happen for the session view record. And I can launch that first clip with this button 
right here. And with that configuration, we're ready to start recording the elements for our meta recording project.